welcome to High Fidelity. I'm your host, Lonius Coltrane. Today we get an opportunity to hang with someone who not only has punk rock roots, but is respected by jugglos. Please welcome Dirtball. What's up, everybody? Thanks to High Fidelity for having me here. Happy to be here. Your parents were bluegrass musicians, and yeah. I, mean, I was wondering how deep your musical roots go. Like you were, you partnered up with Di, uh, you partnered up with Cottonmouth Kings. Yeah. I mean, someone who's familiar with not only you know turntables and and hip hop, but also rock and roll, uh, guitars, bass, drums, and not only that, live music, performing live. Yeah, yeah. it's a big part of it. It's a that's actually the most important part, actually, in the end. But yeah, I started as a as a tiny kid playing the piano. My mom had me on the piano and learning, you know, notes and getting and being able to sing, you know, the right notes and everything. So I remember as a kid that, and then I got into school, and I think that's what sparked me. I, it was just in my my blood because my parents have a, like you said, a bluegrass band. So it um, they've been playing music their whole life, just singing together, and so I grew up hearing that and getting it that way and um, some people say if you know you're born with it or not but I think also you, you don't have to be born with it and if you're around it all the time it kind of becomes part of your life you know? I was into like heavy metal when you know and rap when I was younger but that pushed into like more suicidal tendencies and and I mean actually from from then on, once the rap took over, I really didn't get involved in the punk realm until I met Daddy X, who was deep in it, you know. Really? From, yeah, just his whole doggy style and his old bands back in the day. He was heavy. He's, he's actually really reputable in the punk world. When you're not on the road, uh, you know, I, I know that you like to hunt. Would you mind telling those out there who do like to hunt, or those who might not be, you know, that are not familiar with just how or where their meat comes from? Would you mind talking about no, that? No, not all. I, I, yeah, I've grown up hunting. I deer hunt and elk hunt primarily, and I upland bird hunt with my dog. But like the big game hunting, I became really into the hunt and the camp, and like I do big wall tent setups, you know, like with stoves and stuff, and so I, um, I'm really into the hunt and more than the kill sometimes. And so, anyway. It's, you know, it's the thrill of the chase, you know. Not it is, thrill, dude, yeah. and learning how to track and like what the Indians, I usually am like putting myself in what the uh, Indians experienced, you know, like um, it's the exact same thing. And when you're out there, it's just the weirdest deal, like tracking, figuring out, tracking when there's no snow, just off broken limbs on, the, you know, things like that, really learning that craft. You know, the Juggalos are really into you. So, oh, yeah, I love you know. it. Can we get a good whoop whoop? Yeah, whoop whoop. It's been a big part of my, uh, I have to thank the Juggalos and everyone like Reno Riders and all, you know, these these core groups of Juggalos all over the U.S. Like some of the first tours I did were that way, like the Shaggy Tuto Fuck the Fuck Off tour. I was on that and I did like three Hallow Wickeds and a few other various ICP runs, Happy Days run and some different stuff. But as a solo artist, so this was before with Cottonmouth and then we did stuff with Cottonmouth, but I really developed, that was honestly 70, 80 percent of my fan base is Juggalo. Well, that's great. Uh, I know that the Juggalos are excited about your show tonight. Yeah, I'm and, stoked. Uh, I'm, I'm... We're excited to have you. And are you ready to go shop? Yeah, let's do it. Right. I'm in. Thank let's you for it. having me, bud. You're welcome, man. Appreciate Bye. it, man. <laughs> We picked out the Blue Andrew. Interesting story here. I was uh, at a, the reason we picked it out was I was at a Terry uh, Hart's uh, grand opening at Universal in Florida situation with Big B. Everybody knows Big B. What's up, what's up, what's up? Um, but I, I'm a drummer and I, I'm about as tall as most of the Blue Men. About the same, same skinny build. Look the same, especially with blue stuff. Anyway, this lady comes up to me. She just about shits herself, and she's she's looking at me. She's like, "Oh my God!" She's like, "Is that him?" And she's with Big Diesel. Yeah. And she's the lady that hires the blue men in all the divisions, and she wanted to hire me. And I had just joined Cottonmouth Kings, and I said, "Nope." 
<laughs> but anyway, we could have that just to tell the story. So that yeah, could have been a blue man. So for me, this is my first uh, big hip hop record that I think took over my life to the point where I sold my Game Boy and all my games. I think it took over everyone. To get this record, yes. So uh, without this record, and still, I don't know where he'd be on the West Coast. I speak as I take me a drink to the middle water and get to make it to this bitch named Sadie. She used to be my homeboy's lady. Thank you very much. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Appreciate seeing you guys tonight at the show. And a big whoop whoop to all whoop, those whoop. Reno Riders out there. Thank you guys. High Fidelity, yeah. Recycled Records. Recycled Thank you guys. Recycled Records, Reno Riders. Whoop whoop. whoop. All right, yo. West Coast, Santa Ana, California. Bend, Oregon. Reno, Nevada. I love gotten up the west and into the inner mountain west. And God damn it, I'll tell you what. No snow in this motherfucker this year. I'm happy about it right now, but coming tonight. Yes, it's the way with it. Good, good, yeah, good, good. 